In this lesson, we'll take a look at solving factorable polynomial inequalities and algebraically. And the uh, types that we'll look at are linear, and there's actually no factoring in those, but we'll also look at quadratic and a cubic example in another, uh, on another page as well. And in the first uh, page here, we're asked to solve each of the following and graph the solution on a number line. And so the first one is x plus 5 is less than or equal to negative 2. Now we want to isolate the x, so we need to get rid of this plus 5. And so the opposite of adding 5, of course, is to subtract 5. So we'll subtract 5 from both sides. On the left, the uh, 5 and negative 5, of course, add to 0. So we're left with just x on the left. And negative 2 subtract 5 is negative 7. So we have x is less than or equal to negative 7. Now, that means all numbers from negative 7 <coughs> and numbers below negative 7 included. So on the number line, we'll put a solid dot at negative 7 because we do want to include the negative 7. And then the arrow extends from the left towards negative infinity. So it includes all numbers below negative 7 as well. So the equal to sign is here. That means that's why there's a solid dot at the negative 7. In uh, a few other examples, we don't have equal signs. We just have a less than or a greater than, which would mean we'd have an open circle. We wouldn't include that number, but all numbers to the left of it or to the right of it, depending upon the direction of the inequality. For b, uh, we're asked to solve negative 3x minus 2 is less than 10, so we need to isolate the x. So first of all, we'll isolate the negative 3x and get rid of the negative 2. And so the opposite of subtracting uh, 2 is to add 2 to both sides, so we'll add 2 to both sides. And then we'll be left with negative 3x on the left is less than, and 10 plus 2 is 12. Now, when you have an inequality and you divide both sides by negative or multiply, it doesn't matter, the direction of the inequality changes. And to show you an example of that, let's say that I had 2 is less than 5. If I multiply both sides of that by negative 1, I'll have negative 2 on the left and negative 5 on the right. And the only way to put a correct inequality sign on is to put a greater than because although 2 is less than 5, negative 2 is greater than negative 5. So notice by multiplying by a negative value, the direction of the inequality changes. So when I try to isolate the x here by dividing by negative 3, the direction of this inequality is going to change. And so we would get x is greater than negative 4. So to make this mathematically correct here, as I divide by negative 3, I would really want to change the direction of that to greater than. So x is greater than negative 4 is my solution. Now, so that means all numbers above negative 4. Now, we do not include negative 4 because negative 4 isn't greater than negative 4. There's no equal sign here. So that's why we put an open circle on negative 4, and then the arrow goes towards the right, which means we're talking about numbers bigger than negative 4. Flipping over to the second example, we're asked to solve x squared minus 25 is greater than 0. And we, this is a quadratic, so we need to factor this quadratic. And um, it's the difference of two squares. x is squared, and the 25 is also a perfect square, and we have a subtraction sign between. So that will factor into x plus 5 times x minus 5. Now, we've got two different factors here, so we need to find out where each of these factors equals 0. And they actually d then divide the number line, this is supposed to be a number line here, into intervals. And we'll check on those intervals to see where each factor is positive or negative and use that to figure out where the whole uh, x squared minus 25 is positive or negative. We're looking for where it's positive because so, it says greater than 0 here. So if we set x plus 5 and x minus 5 to 0, if we set x plus 5 to 0, we get negative 5 for a solution. And if we set x minus 5 to 0, we get positive 5 for a solution. So this 5 comes from setting that factor to 0, and that negative 5 comes from setting this factor to 0. And so we'll put uh, negative 5 and 5 on our interval, our number line here. And so our intervals are where x is less than negative 5, which is that interval. Between negative 5 and 5 is this interval, so negative 5 to 5. And then above 5 is x is greater than 5. So those are the intervals that uh, this word refers to. Now on the left of the table here, we're going to put, put each of those factors, the x minus 5, the x plus 5, and then the product of the two of them as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to check the sign of each of these factors and then what's down here is the product of the two signs to figure out whether the whole thing 
the x plus 5, x minus 5, or ultimately x squared minus 25, which is the same thing, is, is greater than 0 or less than 0. And so what we'll do is choose a number in each of these intervals. So for example, uh, x is less than negative 5. Just choose a number below negative 5, like for example, negative 8. And I'm going to say if I substitute negative 8, and this is just a test number, in place of x, negative 8 minus 5 would be negative 13. And so that factor would be negative. It really doesn't matter that it's the 13 because that's just a test number. I could have chosen x to be negative 100 and the value would be negative 105, but it's still negative. That's the point. And so if I put negative 8 here, my test number, or any number below negative 5, negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3, but any other be number below negative 5 would work the same way. When you add 5 to it, it's still going to be negative. And so we put a negative there. And so what goes down here, x plus 5 times x minus 5 is the product of these two factors, which is the product of a negative and a negative, which would be positive. So we put a positive there. Now, between negative 5 and 5, if you want to choose a test number or just think about numbers in general, I'm going to do a test number one more time here. So let's say we'll choose the number 1. 1 is between negative 5 and 5. So if I put 1 in place of x here, 1 minus 5 would be negative 4. So we, again, have a negative there. But notice that the next factor, if I put 1 in place of x, 1 plus 5 is positive. And so we get a positive for that factor. That factor has changed sign past the negative 5. And so what goes down here is the product of a negative and a positive, which of course would be a negative. Now let's, let's not do the test number for the last one. Just think of in general if you have any number bigger than 5. If you have a number bigger than 5 and you subtract 5, that's going to be positive. So we would put a positive here. If you have a number bigger than 5 and you add 5 to it, again, it's going to be positive. So we have a positive here, and the product of a positive and a positive is, of course, positive. Now we're looking for where x squared minus 25, or the product of x plus 5 and x minus 5, is greater than 0. So it's greater than 0 on that interval, and it's greater than 0 on this interval. So those two intervals, because the product is positive, that's what we're looking for. Okay. So because these are both positive, we go to the intervals that they're positive on. And so we would say our solution is x is less than negative 5 or x is greater than positive 5. The way we would graph it on the number line, there's the x is less than negative 5. Notice uh, there's no equal sign here. So we do not include negative 5, but we do include all numbers below it. And then x is greater than 5. We don't include the 5 because 5 isn't greater than 5. And, but we do include all numbers to the right of it, bigger than it. So that's how we would graph that solution.